I grew up in Seattle. And there's two things that you need to know about Seattle this time of year. The first is that it's raining. The second is that it is dark. It is so very dark. About a year and a half ago, I moved to San Diego. And I gotta tell you, the winter solstice is different. Yes, it's still sunny. And the temperature is still pretty good. But if you pay attention, the year is turning. We get wild cloud bursts. We get a little bit more greenery. It's cooler at night. And the night is longer. Not as long as it is in some other places, but longer. And because it's so sunny, when the sun sets, it sets dramatically and gets dark quickly. There's a story that I appreciate about the winter solstice, and it's from Circle Round by Starhawk and Diane Baker and Anne Hill. And in this story, this is a story about the, it's called The Rebirth of the Sun. And in the story, the sun is shining and making all the food and doing all the work and gets very, very tired. And so the days get shorter and shorter and shorter and the night gets longer. And then eventually the night um, feels sorry for the sun and the sun and holds the sun to herself and the sun is able to rest and the night is very long. And then all of the people and all of the children sing songs to the sun and say thank you for all the wonderful things it does, and eventually the sun is reborn, uh, new and shining. And one thing I appreciate about this story is that this is a cycle that we all go through, or that we need to. It invites us to appreciate the night. It invites us to appreciate that part of ourselves that needs rest, that part of ourselves that needs rejuvenation and quiet and stillness and waiting. That part of ourselves that's hurting and vulnerable and needs care. I don't know about you, but it seems to me like in dominant North American culture, all we do is ignore the night and ignore rest. And we do this very literally. We uh, turn on more electric light bulbs, we stay up later, we look at our computer screens, um, and this makes us just more tired and more irritable, and less creative. And so what I challenge myself to do is to learn this from this idea of the rebirth of the sun, and to give myself permission at this time of year to think about what are the parts of me that are tired? What are the parts of me that need rest, that need a little bit of nurturing. Honestly, this is a bit of a stretch for me. For most of my life, and now is no exception, I keep busy. In high school, I was shuttled from one activity to another. I always wanted to be doing something else. I was frustrated I couldn't do more. And now I work, I'm in a chorus, I do a lot of reading, and there's nothing wrong with doing a lot of things, but I've started to realize that I've been using busyness as a way to avoid uh, what I'm feeling and what I'm thinking about. My father was recently diagnosed with a serious illness, and in the last months, I have been doing and doing and doing and not really letting myself think about his illness. And it's funny, I've gotten kind of grouchy and it's been hard to concentrate. And I recently was able to see him and we caught up and we talked about things. Uh, you know, the Mariners just signed someone new, so that's very important to him and I. And at one point we were in a car going somewhere, not even talking about this, and I just all of a sudden blurted out, 
I'm worried about you. I'm worried you won't be able to be here for important things in my life. And we cried a little bit. And I felt a little better. And he gave me permission to share this with you. It's still sad, and I'm still really afraid. But my challenge to myself now, and particularly in this season, is to listen to the wisdom of the turning year. To recognize that there is a time for waiting and stillness. To pay attention to those signs, maybe dramatic, may be subtle, that our beings, our souls, are entering a time of waiting, of rest, of night, of vulnerability. To realize that just as there is a time of the year for even the shining sun to rest in the arms of the night, that there is a time for all of us to rest and to hold one another in our vulnerability in our care, to give space for those feelings, for what is inside, for what is internal. Because that's the source of our connection. That's the source of creativity. And that's my hope for all of us in this season, is to give ourselves space, to give ourselves a rest to look at our tired and broken and fearful and sad selves and to say, come here, rest in my arms. Out of that place to be reborn.